For this video, I thought I'd just throw a few recent clips from some of the trips I've done in the last couple of months. Here we are leaving Colorado on the way to California. This part of the trip was memorable because they kept us down at 17,000 for quite a while over the mountains, so we got some good views. It wasn't uh, that high from an above ground level point of view. At this point, we had gotten up to 30,000 feet, and we were near Eagle, Colorado. And I've got another video on my channel that shows a previous flight into there. And here we are making our way over to Sedona, Arizona from Texas. We were just north of the White Sands Missile Range and found that they were blocking GPS at the time, which had an interesting effect on the aircraft. Various systems went down, the Garmins went into what they called dead reckoning mode, where it just sort of drifts and hopes to try to keep up with your position. But over time, it would get more and more error in uh, the location it thought you were at. Thankfully, our Sentry ADSB and GPS receiver was working just fine. It receives from some of the other constellations of satellites, and even though the U.S. GPS system was being jammed, the other systems worked well. And so we could go into heading mode on the panel for the autopilot and use ForeFlight to navigate exactly where we needed to be. Here's our approach into Sedona. You can see it's on a mesa. It's about 500 feet above the rest of the city. It's really beautiful. It was uh, thankfully very clear weather, so that made that pretty easy. The approach into here isn't uh, particularly great. I don't think it gets you very low, but one of the problems we had in this clear weather was simply being distracted by the gorgeous scenery around here. We had to cross over a mountain ridge to uh, get into this area, and so we had to lose a lot of altitude at the very end. I think the traffic pattern was around 6,000 feet. And at this point, we've crossed over the runway, and we're turning left to enter downwind to come around to land. Here we are on the base leg, about to turn left to land on the runway. And I really had to struggle to go look at the runway and not take in all these cool rock formations while we were making the approach. And here's our takeoff a few days later on runway 3 again. We decided to go left after takeoff just to get a little view of the town before we 
circled back around to the right from this perspective to head home to Texas. So this is later on the return trip home from Sedona and we had to work our way through some rain and a little bit of uh, small thunderstorms that thankfully moved out of our path as we got close to Austin Executive. final approach to Austin Executive. We did the GPS approach and unfortunately due to the rain the camera decided to focus on the windshield for a bit. You can kind of see the, the heating elements that do the defogging and de-icing but the focus fixes itself up here in a second. And last but not least, here is the final bit of our flight up to Chicago Executive a couple of weekends ago. This was one of those flights where everything just felt really good, really smooth. It was almost as if the airplane was just doing everything by itself. The ceilings were about 500 feet AGL, and it was nearing sunset, but we had about a 20-minute uh, lead time before that. And we just got a great path into the approach, nice and smooth lineup. Uh, the approach itself was easy, and then even taxiing over to the FBO was super simple. We just turned about 45 degree left down at the other end of the runway and went straight to the FBO. So once again, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.